All right, in this video, we're going to uh, show you some of the features that are actually on our website. And if you're an automotive locksmith and you own our product, website is arlabs.com. Doing this on a CF31 notebook. arlabs.com. There's our website. Now, if you're an automotive locksmith, you haven't been here for a while and you want to know what it is that we have available for you, you can click the Automotive Locksmith selector and here is the Automotive Locksmith page. And uh, these are all the things that we have available. Perhaps you're unaware of things that we've added recently. So uh, I'm going to point them out to you. We have AccuTouch Probe, Matter of fact, let's just go up here and you can see this is the locksmith kit page, web page. If you buy locksmith kit number one, these are what this is what you get with it. But anyway, we talk about everything that the kit does, how the kit works, the locksmith librarian, how about uh, if you want to peruse it, that's, uh, you can do that at your leisure. So if we go down to the other options, where it says locksmith kit options, we have the precision probe set, which is good for con or required to connect to fine pitch uh, small lead parts such as uh, quad flat pack 64 pin. Motorola microcontrollers, we have a dip clip. I use my pointer here. Well, it's dip click, dip, dip, <laughs> dip clip, which attaches to the dip size components, which are like in the uh, the Toyota Sequoia, but you can also use the probe set. So you don't, this, these are optional. You don't need to get this. And if you want to do things out of circuit, and our product is specifically designed to do things in circuit, you can get the out of circuit adapter. So if you want to unsolder that uh, eight pin double E prong and stick it in an out of circuit adapter, which then connects to the in circuit adapter, uh, you can do that. Some people are just unsoldering fiends and that's what they do. So we, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Uh, then we have the AccuTouch probe, uh, which is designed specifically to be placed over the top of an 8-pin double E prime, you push down and you can read. Um, you don't need to, many times you don't need to clean the part. Um, you just push the probe down, there's a command in the buffer editor called get valid data where you just press G, it'll read the part, read the data out of the part, compare it with the data that it just read and if they both match, meaning that you read it twice and both times you read it they were the same. Then we pop up in green and say part and buffer match and at that point you can save your file. Uh, then we have the Subaru Probe Set. Subaru Probe Set was specifically designed to address an issue uh, that locksmiths were encountering when they dealt with a Subaru BIU with a little teeny weeny double E prime in a, in a package called MSOP, which is Micro Small Outline Package. They're about the size of a dog tick and they're really hard to connect to. So we came up with a mechanism by which you don't have to do anything other than use some uh, special push pins and a couple of, uh, of uh, surface mount probes, standard size surface mount probes, you hook up the four places on the module and you can read and program it. Uh, then we have the EEPROM replacement kit because many times we've been asked by customers, oh my gosh, I broke a leg on an EEPROM and I was unsoldering it and I don't have a replacement. So what we did was we created a kit of uh, common double EEPROMs that you will uh, possibly find um, and we have the 93 family 2595 family and 24 family of the common parts. We have three of each. So that's available if you'd be interested in that. Uh, we also have a custom handmade uh, organization and travel case. So if you want to keep your Air 32, Air 32A, and all of your modules um, or all of your adapters and boxes uh, inside, and then it closes with uh, some parachute clips and you can keep it all together, uh, we have that available. 
Um, and we also have the automotive power cable, which allows you to power your programming unit from uh, an accessory lighter or accessory connector or in a vehicle, basically, 12 volts DC. Now, you will not be able to program video game EEPROMs with the automotive power cable. It's only going to work for 8-pin double EEPROMs, and it will also work for the Motorola microcontrollers. But it's not universal for the programmer. It's just for the lower voltage components. Uh, we also offer reconditioned Panasonic Toughbooks. If you want to get a turnkey package from us, we can provide you with a computer. Uh, we have a 44-pin SOIC Flash EEPROM adapter. This is specifically designed for the Volvo um, ECU, but this is the one thing where you got to unsolder it. Uh, so you got to unsolder it and put it in the adapter to uh, read it and program it. Um, we also have the AccuTouch probe. If you happen to own an Easy Flasher and you would like to have the ability to connect the Easy Flasher to a part with the AccuTouch probe so you don't have to clean it, um, we have a uh, uh, connection option which, with, where which the AccuTouch probe connects to your Easy Flasher and you don't have to use their clip has the little grounding probe as, as part of it. Uh, we also have the uh, a DMAX interface. If you have a DMAX and you want to use the AccuTouch probe, you can use uh, the DMAX interface. And we also offer an AccuTouch probe with a, a dip base, so if you have another product, like in this case we show you with a Z-Full, um, it plugs into the dip socket, which in this case is like this on the little uh, mezzanine board that you stick in the side of your whatever, uh, whatever your third party uh, uh, product is. In addition to that, we offer a 20 megahertz crystal. Why would we offer a 20 megahertz crystal? Well, there is one particular Mercedes module that you, in order for it to, to uh, communicate, it can't run at this industry standard frequency. The one that the, for the crystal that's actually on the module itself, the immobilizer itself, it has to run at 20 megahertz. So we sell a crystal that you uh, solder; it's reusable. You don't have to. It's not just a one-time use. And uh, that crystal uh, allows you to connect our um, automotive or locksmith kit number two to the immobilizer and. Uh, then you can access the data that's in the, the microcontroller. Okay, so those are things that if you're a, an automotive locksmith and you have our product or are considering our product, those are options that you have available. I'm going to go back to the home page and I want to show you something down here which um, a lot of uh, people don't know is available. Down here at this selector it says locksmith documentation. I'm going to click that, and then that brings up sub-selectors below it. Okay, and this is all of this is on one page. So we're going to go to uh, this page, and I'm going to tell you basically why we provide this page. The uh, automotive locksmith community many times they're uncertain about how to hook things up, things that are necessary, and what to do. So we have created this page and we have a function in our software called the locksmith light librarian uh, the, the librarian is it's a general function a general a general feature of the of the uh, AR software it's used for more than uh, than automotive locksmiths but it all, it also uh, depending upon the information that's entered it makes it a very handy uh, information source for automotive locksmiths so here is an example of the librarian um, and all the things that you can do with it. And I just want you to be aware of um, what this lets you do. Okay, uh, for example, in the locksmith librarian we have uh, what are called AR setup files. AR setup files uh, are designed so that if you don't know what to do with a particular module that you're working with, you can go to the air setup files, find your vehicle, find your module, and it'll tell you what chip to use. Well, not not chip, but what EEPROM part number to use, and give you um, basically the option if you choose 
to just go ahead and press a key and it'll automatically choose the right part for you and launch you back to the system so you can perform whatever activity you want. Then we have how to save, which is how to save your uh, data file from the, the buffer after you've read it. Set volts on the right there. Tells you what voltage to set. It's a guide, it's guidelines for the ASCR SM1A and circuit adapter because uh, many times you'll be working with a, a part and you won't know um, what to uh, what voltage to set the adapter at. You're you're not sure. So set volt is basically information that guides you there. Then we have MO new. A set of Virgin Toyota immobilizer files. We have a uh, skim example, which is an example that describes how to uh, locate uh, the encrypted hex values, which uh, you'll find in a, in a skim module. We have uh, before you start, which tells you how to uh, what you need to do before you begin working with a, a module, which you how to clean, how to confirm you're connected. We have an Isuzu example. We have a, a way to uh, a file that will um, virginize a screen module called Scream New. We have Chrysler uh, hex to pin conversion. We have Lexus, which is the reflash files for Lexus. We have Toyota Early, which is describes the early files uh, for the the Toyota. We have Toyota Delco, which describes how to uh, deal with the uh, Toyota Delco. ECU with the, the Motorola microcontroller on it. We have Make Key. We have Toyota Notes. These are notes that were provided to us by locksmiths. Uh, mask the part, which allows you to convert a mask number to an actual industry standard part number. We have the Toyota uh, entry, which are all the Toyota reflash files. We have the GM pin, which allows you to uh, example, which shows where the pin is located in the dash data field. Uh, Pacifica, how to deal with the Pacifica system, uh, Saab Twice module where the values are located, uh, Honda where the values are located in the data field, um, the you are done was what to do after you reflash an immobilizer instructions there. Uh, anyway, these are all in the library and I'm going to just go ahead and, and move on down so you get the rest of them here. How to program, Saab SIM. We have a file where you can virginize a Saab SIM and then you can add a key to that file and then resync it to the ECU if you have a Tech 2 with Saab card. I know we have VW example and uh, Vallejo example. Anything with a, an underscore EX after it is an example where we show you um, where the key information is stored in the data field. Then we have the microcontroller documentation procedures. Okay, in this case, we have uh, photos of how to hook up to a particular immobilizer with our system and read it. So um, I'm not going to, uh, I guess I can, let's see, let's move down here and find one. That, let's do the Toyota 4, GM, 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 GM. These are all the different immobilizers that you can attach to and read, but I want to get down to one, the Delco. Okay, Toyota Delco. Now, I'm going to download these files and just show you the pictures that we provide so that you're aware of what uh, we actually can get you to do. We're going to save this. I mean for this video to get incredibly long. But if you're still watching, we will go downloads, which is where the pictures are going to be. Go to Delco ECU, and they're zipped. Okay. Start with pictures here. I'm just going to show you what, what, what we provide you. Uh, there's the device. Device equals 688C11 E9. So when you start our software and it says enter device type, that's the part that you enter. And there's the microcontroller so you know where it is. Then we have connecting the ACOM2. The ACOM2 is how you communicate with the module. So we show you how to hook the ACOM2 to the programmer. We show you how to set up the ACOM2 with the interface, the little terminator board. 
and this is uh, you turn on the ACOM2 and you're ready to communicate. Okay, well, how do you communicate? First, you got to attach the probes to the microcontroller. And here we show you a picture of the probes by color and by pin, so you know what it is, uh, what, what probes go to what pin, and you're ready to communicate with the part. So what's the next thing that you do? Let's see, you have another picture here just to make it a little easier. Probes top view, so you got a little bit, that's all kind of a, uh, a view that's a little farther away. Then, you communicate. Establish communication with the part. You press, go to our software, you press Z, which is device options, you press 1, and it will, you see the sequence happen on the screen, buffer upload complete, and then, if, if it's hooked up properly and the module's working and you didn't make any mistakes, it'll say buffer upload complete, and then down below in white, it says communication verified. That means that you're talking to the part, and you are ready to proceed. So the next picture shows you read part. And after you hit, after you uh, are communicating with the part, you treat it just like any other double EEPROM. You go, in this case, you can go to the buffer editor, hit G, it'll read it, compare it, pop up, and say part and buffer match. So that's what you would do in order to uh, communicate with the Delco module, the microcontroller on the Delco module. The same procedure um, and photos we have for Mercedes, for BMW, for Saab twice. So try to give you as much uh, assistance and information as possible. This is just a diagram of the microcontroller itself. Okay. Now, we also have, as part of the locksmith page, if you, yeah, come on. Go down past the um, Motorola or the, the microcontrollers. We have the VW. You have a picture of the VW and how you can access the VW without the, v, the cluster on the, the, the Jetta and the Passat without um, taking the thing apart from points on the other side of the module. And last but not least, we have the Toyota Sequoia because we had so many people that um, were uncertain about how to do this Toyota Sequoia. We added it to uh, the locksmith documentation page. There are pictures of how to put, where to put the probes. Um, I guess before I wrap up the video, I'll just go ahead and do this so you can see it. Save file. And we will go once again back to downloads. And here, okay, you might ask yourself, why did we uh, zip these? Because if you want to put them locally on your host machine, you can. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to go through every picture. But there, there's the, the Sequoia immobilizer with the probes, uh, the service mount probes attached to the dip part. So we don't need a clip. You can use a clip if you want, but you don't need the clip. And if you notice here, the purple probe is attached to this little blue device, which is a ceramic resonator. It's the same as a crystal. And um, you uh, have to have this attached because this microcontroller, even on, with the lowest voltage on our in-circuit adapter, will continue in many cases to run, and you can't get a good read. So this probe ensures that you can get a good read. All right, so that is the documentation that we have available to automotive locksmiths on our website, and also the things that we sell to automotive locksmiths. And if you would consider um, purchasing our product, uh, we would certainly appreciate it, or purchasing any of our options, we would certainly appreciate it. Um, and you can uh, get in touch with us at our information on our website, which is airlabs.com